This is the denominator. Oh, no, actually just denominator. Made by the Denominator Adding Machine Company from the early 1920s. It has 11 buttons labeled with different denominations of American currency. Each button has its own separate three-digit counting register. Over here we got a big wing nut for clearing the machine to zero. If you look closely you can see the serial number on the wing nut. It looks like 3540 maybe. It also has this little platform where you could put a little pad of paper. And the whole thing is screwed into a real piece of wood. The bottom used to be covered with green felt, but it's disintegrated over the years. I do love that hundred year old wood. The Denominator Adding Machine Company was founded in 1914 by William Cook and Joseph Levine in New York City. My machine says patent pending. Their patent for this thing was filed in 1921 and it was approved in 1923, so this thing must be from the early 20s. That would make it just about a hundred years old. And look at that three cents button. I didn't know this before, but there actually was a three cent coin in the US that was minted until 1889. So they would have still been kicking around when this thing was made. Well, after a hundred years, this thing's doing pretty well. I actually found this at an estate sale collecting dust in somebody's basement. I laid down my five dollars and walked away with a piece of history. The counting windows are pretty dim. This is some kind of plastic film which has turned brown over the years and I wasn't able to clean it off very well. It's a little bit legible in person but it doesn't come through very well on the screen. But the counters still work if you can manage to see them. The wing nut still works great though you gotta crank it pretty hard. It just manually turns all the wheels and sinks them up to the same value and then you just keep turning until they all say zero. Now there's two button caps that are missing on my machine, the one cent and the one dollar. But actually it looks like somebody got rid of the twenty dollar button and then moved the one dollar button over there. The buttons aren't really screwed on there, they just hold in with friction. You can yank them off with pliers and move them around if you want. These empty posts still work, but they're not very smooth. See, it kind of sticks in the down position sometimes. My theory is that those buttons started to stick after a while. Maybe they were getting the most wear and tear for the $1 and the $0.01 cent keys. So the owner yanked the $0.01 cent button and just decided to use the $0.03 cent button instead for the pennies. And then yanked the $1 button and stuck it on the counter for the 20s. But I hear you wondering, dear professor, won't that mess up the adding? Like... You can move the button caps around, but inside the machine, the three cent counter still counts as three, right? And the 20 would still count as 20. But actually, you're overthinking it here. These are totally independent counters. Nothing ever carries over from one to another. It's not like two fives make a 10 here. No, you get three digits of counting per button, and that's all it does, it just counts. So you can use this to count up money, but it doesn't add up the total for you. It just keeps track of how many of each thing you got. In my opinion, it's a bit of a stretch that they call themselves an adding machine company, since I wouldn't really say that this is an adding machine. It just counts individual things, but it doesn't try to add up the total. Anyway, let's see how it works. I got a bunch of coins here, and let's count them up. I'm going to use the three cent button for my pennies. Well, the denominator gets the job done. It does this one very specific job, at least. Really trying to use this thing, it works pretty well. The only issue I can imagine is that there's no way to undo a button press. Sometimes I hit the wrong button by accident, and there's really nothing you can do to fix that. The wing nut will totally clear everything to zero, but there's no way to subtract from the individual counters. The buttons also have to travel quite some distance when you press it, and there's not a lot of feedback until the button just hits the metal case. When I'm trying to do it quickly, sometimes I feel like maybe I didn't press the button all the way down, but if I'm not looking at the counter, there's really no way to tell if it registered or not. Some adding machines like the comptometer had some kind of partial key press detector to help out with this problem, but this thing doesn't have anything like that. Machines of this type are actually still used today. They're sometimes called lab counters because people use them in science labs to keep track of things. They're also called differential counters or cell counters. They're apparently still really popular in biology, like when you're looking in a microscope and you've got to count how many cells you see, you just click that button a bunch of times without even looking away from your sample. But these things are expensive. 
Some of them are digital, but a lot of folks still make the mechanical ones since part of the usability from these things comes from the feel of pushing the mechanical button. You want to count that thing without looking, it better feel like you're counting it. And wouldn't you know it, you can still buy new counters from the denominator company. They're still in business after all these years, still putting in the work making mechanical counting machines. And their headquarters happens to be in Woodbury, Connecticut. It's not too far from where I live, so I took a little trip. The Denominator Company still makes their basic mechanical counter, and you get this thing in tons of different configurations. The 1x1, the 1x2, the 1x3, all the way up to 1x10. Then they got the 2x5, the 2x6. They got ones mounted on clipboards. They got this that I assume is for competition level hungry hungry hippo scoring. And here's a crazy one called the four way king. And my personal favorite, the square T 18 by 18. Is this real life? That big button sure does look nice. I thought of buying a new one just to feel that luxury button, but they got luxury prices too. Just the single counter is $47. The hungry hungry hippo one is $800. And the square T 18 by 18 is $1,351. I could have got 200 of these for that price. But look at that luxurious oversized button. That button is ample. Got that denominator, you know what I'm saying? <music>